Hey guys, welcome to a brand new WPF tutorial. So since I've got my basics out of the way, we're done with the basics of WPF, you know, having a look at what is uh, the main components that constitute to a WPF application. Now we can finally get into the designing aspect. So last time in my video, I showed you how to create a borderless window, a window which is independent of the OS, uh, you know, with having your own functionality for minimizing, maximizing and closing and all those things you can do it on your own so it's independent of your OS it's a very neat trick and you do need it a lot if you're using WPF applications having said that let's now get to the real deal the real deal obviously is the way your application will look and for that you need to know the basics of layouting in, uh, in WPF so as with HTML or as with any of the application development environments, you do have certain basic layout options. Layout is obviously the way your form will look. I mean, the way you want to place your components like your text boxes, your labels, your drop down, your combo boxes, all those things. You need to have a certain, you know, methodology to it. You need it to look a certain way. And WPF op offers you certain layouts inherently that you can use to you know better structure your form so there are a lot of it there are like six basic uh, options that WPF op offers and obviously you can do a lot of customizations with it because all of them are customizable it's nothing like fixed you can do a lot of uh, you know banging here and there to make it look the way you want to look so uh, we'll be starting today with the most basic and the most used layout that is the grid layout. The grid layout is nothing but a tabular structure. Just imagine it as a table and uh, you'll be placing your components within the cells of that table. So instead of talking talking we'll just get to programming. So as you'll see this is a very basic window that I've created. Uh, there's nothing fancy about it. I just added window style none. That means there are no close buttons or there is no minimize maximize and all those things so we'll just be starting the grid layout tutorial with the most important tag that is the grid tag obviously it's very very obvious over here so the grid tag is going to be your base tag anything that you define inside it can be placed in your grid that is any components that you define can be placed in a grid layout okay so once you define the grid you need to define what are your rows and what are your columns. As I said before, it's a tabular structure. So you, get, you do need to get your rows defined and you do need to get your columns defined to tell the, uh, tell the environment that which component can go in which row and which column. So instead of talking about it, let's just show you how you do that. To get your row definitions, all you need to do is grid dot row definitions inside this tag you'll be writing out how many rows you want and how you want those rows to be displayed so your row definition will have lots of properties as you'll see here you can bind it and you can do a lot of things you can have context menus for that row and all those things but right now we need to concentrate on the basics now as you may know the row will expand to you know whatever is the content in the column definition so the row will only have the height property defining uh, that will be defining over here so the height can be auto uh, customized figure that is in pixels or you can also have a fixed I'll just show you the two main things that you're going to be using that is auto for my first row and for my second row row definition I'm going to define my height as 50 so it's gonna take 50 pixels and it's gonna be fixed to that 50 pixels itself so as you'll see I've defined two rows that is how you define a row in your grid layout so inside the grid dot row definitions tag you have to define the row definition tag and then you need to define the height of it because that is the property that can change for the row and that is what is going to be used extensively for the next thing you need to de define is your columns so grid dot column definitions 
Inside this tag, you'll be similarly defining your column definition. The column definition is going to tell you how your column is going to be rendered, how many columns are going to be rendered and all those things. So my first column, I say the width of the column should be 100. So it's going to be taking 100 pixels. I end the tag. Then my second column, I say let's have the width as auto because I don't need it to be a fixed, you know, width. I need it to be as big as the content inside it is. So as you'll see, I have two rows defined with the height auto and the height 50. The second and there are two columns with width 100 and width auto. Now, how do you fill in content inside this layout? How do you put your content inside the grid? Well, it's pretty simple. First and foremost, you need to have your, sorry for that. You need to have your content inside the grid tag. You cannot use your contents outside it because it will not understand where your definitions are coming from. So you need to have your uh, content inside the grid tag. So just beneath your definitions, I'll start defining a label. I'll give it some content so that we can visually see. I'll say row one. Wait, let's use the standard notation for better understanding. Row one and column one. So now how do I put this inside my first row, first column of my grid? It's pretty simple. Just use the keyword grid dot row as you'll see over here row equal to zero and grid dot column equal to well what happened okay column equal to zero so as you'll see you have your label which is being placed inside the first row the obviously the indexing starts from zero inside the first row inside the first column and now you'll be able to see your content being rendered over here as you'll see the height is auto and the width is 100 because our first row is auto heighted and the width has been defined as 100 so I'll just take the same label and I'll copy paste it and I'll just change the definitions so it's in our first row itself but the column will be my second column so I'll just change my column number to one and as you'll see the row has been the content rather has been rendered in my first row second column now similarly we will add our remaining rows and columns content this is in my second row first column so I'll just change this and my second row second column this is really hard to, to keep track of when you're making a video about it okay so as you'll see I have my basic grid layout which has defined two rows two columns as you'll see over here and you have four contents which have been added to this particular layout so this layout is going to be used maximum times by people who are developing forms which have you know lots of input in them because that is how you design a fo uh, design a form which is being you know structured as a table because you have a label and a text box label and a text box and at the end you have a submit and cancel button so usually when you are defining forms which you have a lot of input values you'll be using this layout it is a very safe layout to have and it looks good as well and it is customizable as I said you can have a lot of properties for row definitions as well as column definitions and it makes for a very pleasant looking uh, layout so let's just run this program and I'll just show you the output as you'll see it is being rendered as a table uh, without the borders you can add the borders later with certain properties but this is a basic look at how the grid layout works I hope you did understand uh, the basic definitions that we have been using for the grid layout to look like a grid layout so I hope you subscribe like leave a comment and obviously, if you do like uh, my videos, you can re just write down a mention as to what new videos you want to see. And we'll be doing more videos about layouts further in time. So thank you for watching and have a great time.